Today we're going to take a look at the shield bearing captains and lieutenants from the Indomitus box. Hello and welcome back to War Specs Tactics, the strategy focus 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop, as well as these two being some of the nicest looking models in the new Indomitus box in my opinion. The war gear that they're armed with really does add a few new options to primary space marine captains and space marine captains in general for that matter. In this video we'll have a talk about the use of the Primaris Captain with Storm Shield and the Primaris Lieutenant with Storm Shield and Neo Volkite Pistol. We'll go over their data sheets and talk a little bit about including them in a Space Marine army. Let's jump straight into it with that Captain. So this is the guy from the Indomitus box who was also featured in that animated trailer for Warhammer 40k. The guy who's casually carrying around half a skeleton on his Storm Shield. He is of course an HQ choice for Codex Space Marines. And as per some of the new leaks points costs, we can see that he's 105 points including gear, where regular captains with no gear at all have gone up to 80 points, and Primaris ones are 85. So the main question as to whether or not to field him in a more competitive space win list is how much benefit he'll give us over a more bare bones captain. He has the standard stat line for a space win Primaris captain, movement 6, weapon skill and ballistic skill 2+, plus, strength and toughness 4, 6 wounds, 5 attacks, leadership 9 and a 3 plus save. His defensive profile is further augmented by an iron halo and also by this relic shield that he carries. Now before they revealed that they'd changed the storm shield rules somewhat, I was expecting him to have a 3 plus invul save, but instead this relic shield will add 1 to his regular armor save, meaning that he'll have a 2 plus save in most circumstances, and it further protects him by allowing him to ignore mortal wounds on the roll of a 4 plus. This is going to make him decently more survivable than a standard captain. The mortal wound thing will be helpful against some enemies, though I think that's going to be a bit more of a niche occurrence. Similar to Blade Guard veterans and things, he's going to be more durable against AP Zero fire, but a bit less durable against high AP fire, such as Las Cannons and Plasma Guns, for example. A 2 plus save will certainly keep him more safe in melee against incidental threats that he happens to be in combat with. He certainly won't have stray wounds being chipped off him by Imperial Guardsmen or Chaos Cultists anywhere near as much, but if he is left exposed on his own, I think he will be easier to take out, just due to high AP, multi-damage weapons being one of his main threats. Aside from this, he's armed with a Mastercrafted Power Sword and a Heavy Bolt Pistol. The Mastercrafted Power Sword having seen an improvement, it's now Strength plus 1, AP minus 3, and Flat Damage 2. Going to Strength 5 is a really big buff for this, it means that he'll be very effective against both Heavy Infantry, where he'll certainly be chewing through intercessors very efficiently, or at least pose some threats to heavier vehicles, wounding them on fives. The heavy bolt pistol is quite nice with its increased range of 18 inches, meaning that he will be able to fire it just that bit more often than he would have previously. So compared with standard captains, he's going to be a fair bit more durable, and have a moderate melee damage output, particularly strong against heavy infantry. On the downside though, he is slow compared with say taking a jump pack character, although jump pack captains will cost you more than this guy now. He's also not the strongest against vehicles, he can put a few wounds through but he's nothing compared with say a captain with a power fist, and by locking him into this war gear, you do pass up the option to take things like one of the bolt rifles that the captains can take. I think he's going to be a bit of an interesting choice compared with the standard captains. If you're just looking for reroll ones then he won't do that quite as efficiently, and in general in melee, I would typically prefer to be running a power fist compared with this mastercrafted power sword. I think I'd weigh him up against a standard primaris captain with a power fist and a long range weapon of some sort. I think the main choice really is whether or not that extra protection provided by the shield is actually going to be worth it or not, for the additional 10 points or so that you're going to be spending. Moving on to the Primaris Lieutenant from the Indomitus box now, and this guy's a power level 4 HQ choice, elite points saying that he will be 90 points overall including all war gear. Standard Lieutenants are going to go up to 65 and Primaris Lieutenants to 70, so again it's going to be a choice of whether or not this additional war gear is worth the extra investment. Rather than a relic shield, this guy just gets a standard storm shield with a 4 plus inball save and plus 1 to his saving throw. I actually think that this storm shield is far more useful on the Primaris Lieutenant because the captains already have an iron halo for a 4 plus inball save, where lieutenants under normal circumstances don't have any inball save, so going from no inball save to a 4 plus 1 is really quite a big deal. Going to a 2 plus save and a 4 plus inball save is a massive upgrade compared with your standard lieutenant with a regular 3 plus save and no inball. In terms of war gear, he's equipped with a Mastercrafted Power Sword, the same as the Captain. Incidentally, if you're interested in the maths of how much it's likely to kill in a combat phase, then these guys will kill around about 3 intercessors, or on average take around 3 wounds from a toughness 7 or 8 vehicle on average. Of course, the Captain will do very slightly better than the Lieutenant, as he's got one more attack on his profile, but it really isn't the biggest difference in the world, particularly as the Lieutenant is cheaper. The Lieutenant also gets a swanky pistol included in his points cost. This Neo Volkite pistol is a pistol 2 weapon with a 15 inch range, 2 shots, 
Strength 5, AP 0 and damage 2, with the added rule that if you get a 6 on the roll to wound, then you deal an immortal wound in addition to any other damage. Volkite weapons are a bit weird in the way that their damage mechanics work completely differently, part of the gun being AP 0, damage 2 fire, and the other one being mortal wounds that are great at punching through high armour saves. As a very rough rule of thumb, I would assume that he's usually going to do around about one wound on average to pretty much any target that he shoots at. A little bit more to hordes, and a little bit less to multi-wound things with 2 plus armour saves. But in general, the two mechanics do balance out quite well, and he is quite consistent. It's not much, but it's nice to have some sort of shooting output. Again, he is quite slow compared with other options that can deliver his re-roll ones to wound or a buff within 6 inches. And again, compared with a standard lieutenant, you could be taking a power fist on them, which is certainly very threatening in melee, but of course Primaris Lieutenants can't actually take Power Fists at the moment, so if you were set on Primaris either way, then it isn't quite as much of an opportunity cost. Overall, I think in terms of raw competitiveness, this guy's actually considerably better than the Captain, as he offers a bunch of things that standard Primaris Lieutenants don't actually get at the moment, in multi-damage power weapons combined with a good gun, and also a better save and invul save. Not a bad upgrade at all, for just 20 points over the basic Primaris Lieutenant. For chapters to run these guys in, I think that typically they are going to be strongest when paired with an assault chapter of some kind, though they could be absolutely fine in a more ranged chapter, providing those re-rolls and just being a bit of a durable counter-charge threat. If you are looking to maximise damage from these characters themselves though, then Blood Angels and White Scar seem pretty decent choices. Blood Angels plus one to charge to get them into combat, combined with their extra plus one to wound roll really means that those strength five swords are going to be doing nasty damage to anything. White Scars can advance and charge, which is great on slower moving combat units like these guys. Plus when they get into their unique Assault Doctrine, getting plus 1 damage is really nice as well. Salamanders also isn't such a bad choice either. Their re-rolls to hit and wound are really powerful on characters, particularly on this Primaris Lieutenant, who can also make use of it with his Volkite Pistol as well. Ignoring AP-1 also amps up their durability, as it means that not a lot is going to be all that effective when trying to penetrate either a 2 plus armor save or a 4 plus invul. In any case, they certainly both seem pretty usable units. I think the lieutenant is stronger than the captain, at least point for point for the different utility that he brings. I'm sure we'll see plenty of people using them in lists to come, following their popularity from the Indomitus box. If you have any further thoughts on these guys yourself, or if you can see any mistakes or errors in the video, then please let me know down in the comments below. It'd be interesting to read over your thoughts. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. We'll certainly be talking a fair bit more about the Indomitus box over the couple of weeks to come as well as our regularly scheduled 40k tactics content. If you've been finding the videos useful at all, then any support on the channel's Patreon is really appreciated, as it is what allows me to keep on making these quite so regularly. The link is down in the video description below, and in addition to supporting me making new content, channel Patreons also get a bunch of other advantages, such as seeing certain videos early each week, regular polls to see what sort of videos come next on the channel, access to the Patreon role in the Discord channel, and also entry into the Auspets Tactics prize draw each month, where this month we're giving away three boxes of the Indomitus set. If any of that sounds good, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I hope to see you guys next time.